Are y'all ready to get into this mega church messiness series? Does T.D. Jakes have a lisp? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm ready. Well, before we get started. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you want some snacks? Woo, woo. I said, do you want some snacks? Woo, woo. <laughs> Our online concession stand at rrgsnacks.com has an assortment of five-star goodies for you to munch on while watching our videos, such as beef and bacon jerky, butter toffee peanuts, and green apple licorice. Now, let's jump into the messy life of Pastor Jamal Bryant. Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant was born on May 21st, 1971. A damn Gemini, sis. I knew it. I know a Gemini when I see one. And his parents were reverends, a preacher's kid. Oh, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. He was a gifted student, but managed to flunk the 11th grade and eventually dropped out of high school. His father was elected as an AME bishop in 1988, and the family joined him on his first assignment in West Africa. While there, things changed for Pastor Bryant as the people of West Africa began questioning how he managed to fail an education that was given to him for free. His family returned to the States and settled down in Atlanta. Pastor Bryant told the Baltimore Sun that his parents had limited resources by the time he decided to go to college. So Bishop Eddie Long of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church stepped up to help pay Pastor Bryant's tuition to Morehouse College. Wait, hold up now. Pastor Bryant announced during a church sermon, I am eternally grateful for him making that deposit, deposit? and that impact in my life. Impact. With absolutely no fanfare, he never announced it from his pulpit, over a microphone, even to this day. Pastor Bryant graduated in 1994 and obtained a job as the director of the NAACP's Youth and College Division. And that's where he met Giselle Graves, a Hampton University graduate. She told Bravo's The Daily Dish that they bonded over their jobs. She said, Pastor Bryant and I have been in the trenches of trying to do civil rights and trying to make sure that we leave this world a better place. Giselle wrote a fictional book about their fairy tale love story. Or a nightmare. <laughs> In the book, which we've linked in the description box, she explained how they were friends for two years before they took their relationship to the next level. Now, this is where things get a bit murky. Ooh, tell me more, girl, tell me more. Giselle and Pastor Bryant have never publicly confirmed which day they became an item or when they got engaged. But we do know that he welcomed a daughter named Topaz in August 1998 with a woman named Crystal Madison. Now, wait a minute now. Oh, this is messy. Pastor Bryant founded the Empowerment Temple AME Church in Baltimore in 2000. According to Giselle's book, Pastor Bryant was reportedly told by someone in the church that he needed to have a loyal wife by his side. As for Giselle, she was reportedly told that she needed to make their relationship more public so she could stake her claim, since there were a lot of women women who wanted to take the pastor to Pound Town. Pound Town, just left Pound Town. Women in the church always trying to take the pastor to Pound Town with they tricking asses. Even though Giselle had no interest in being a first lady, she continued on with their relationship and they got married in 2002. The math ain't math and I'm confused, girl. Girl, we gonna circle back to the fact that he had a baby in 2000 and they got married in 2002 and she said they was friends for two years. Girl, we ain't forgot. This man had a whole baby on his girlfriend. According to Giselle, her dad opposed their relationship and didn't even attend the damn wedding. Now that's a red flag. Ding, ding. Pastor Bryant's popularity increased in the church due to his use of hip-hop references and his sermons about sexuality, relationship drama, substance abuse, and social issues. The straight talk was appealing to his youthful congregation, with one parishioner saying, He keeps it real. He hasn't forgotten where he's come from. He didn't forget because he was still out there in them damn streets. <laughs> He held Tuesday night men's Bible study classes called The Locker Room, where men could talk about everything that was going on in their lives. One male parishioner said Pastor Bryant was an awesome man of God and the prince of the hood. Ninja what? 
Pastor Bryant and Giselle welcomed their daughter Grace in 2004, and their twins Angel and Adore were born in 2006. In an interview with Angela Yee, Giselle said she was so busy being a mom that she didn't realize her husband was sticking his sausage rocket in other women. Someone who knew all about the pastor being reckless with his dangling had to break the news to Giselle. She confronted him, and he told her the truth right away. In an interview with Roland Martin, Pastor Bryant said he never thought he would get caught, nor did he think his wife would ever leave him. Unlike other pastors who blamed their shortcomings on the devil, Pastor Bryant took responsibility for his actions. He said, Nothing was flawed in her or my marriage. It was my own immaturity. Damn right it was. They separated for a year, and Giselle finally decided to walk away because she didn't think his infidelity was a one-time occurrence. They didn't have a prenup, so their divorce proceeding included a lot of fights over the empire that they grew together. As for the pastor, well, he said he was more concerned with saving his career than saving his marriage. Mm-hmm, because that career brings draws with it, don't it? <laughs> you get panties thrown at the pulpit. That's why you're more interested in preserving your career. With 12,000 members of his congregation feeling disappointed and let down by the news, Pastor Bryant said he did all he could to protect his name. But the consequences of his actions sent him into a downward spiral. He lost 17 pounds and had to attend therapy. That's what his ass get. Their divorce was finalized in 2009, and in an interesting turn of events, Giselle still showed up to some of his church services. Girl, for what? I want you to help me thank God for the visionary of this church. Amen. Uh, Lady Giselle Bryan for who she is. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're honored and glad to have her and our three beautiful With children. Giselle out of the way, bye. Pastor Bryant was free to give his dangling to the whole congregation if he felt like it. That sounds fun as hell. In 2013, rumors emerged that the pastor had gotten a member of his congregation pregnant. God. Ninja, what? Ebony Magazine ran the story and reported that the mother of the child was 17 at the time the baby was conceived. 17? Oh, he need his ass beat. This trifling ass ninja. Pastor Bryant wrote an open letter to Ebony Magazine, expressing how disappointed he was in their article. He wrote, No minors were involved, but my minor children have been affected. This accusation is categorically and completely untrue. To publish this with absolutely no source lends itself to reckless endangerment to my children, my congregation, and my community. Sit your ass down, Jamal. Shut your ass up, Jamal. Ebony later issued an apology. Months later, the mother of his child filed a request for child support, and the pastor acknowledged they had a daughter together named Naomi. Oh, oh. Use a hoe, oh, use a hoe, I said that use a hoe, ho! Oh. <laughs> ho. Now, let's fast forward to 2014. During an episode on season seven of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Phaedra Park's then-husband Apollo discovered text messages between her and a man she had saved in her phone as chocolate. Ooh, come on, Hershey. <laughs> Come on, Hershey. Talking about, oh, I can't wait to and see you again. Chocolate. The man that you've been sleeping with. The man that you've been going around. It was later confirmed that Mr. Chocolate was actually Pastor Bryant. With his messy self. Did they date? I don't know. He says no. Okay. She says yes. Who knows? Oh, she says yes. Well, she said yes to her friends. Okay. <laughs> Would you be upset uh -huh. if you found out that they had no. dated? Not at all. Not at all. Care nothing Why? about Phaedra. Right. Yes. Okay. She's not important. Okay. <laughs> Whatever happened between Phaedra and the pastor didn't last. And during a June 2014 sermon, Pastor Bryant told his congregation how he really felt about women by stating, <clears throat> Preach on it now. These hoes ain't loyal. Damn. Yo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say what now? The man of God didn't stop there. He also had words for baby mamas and the sanctified sissies of the world. Well, one thing is for certain and two for sure. Wouldn't be no baby mamas without baby daddies. Seem like you better at making a baby mama than you are preaching the gospel. And that's on Mary Had a What? Little Lamb. 
and then came 2016. In between referring to a group of black pastors who met with then-President Donald Trump as prostitutes and pawns, did he lie though? He made headlines again after a Los Angeles masseuse named LaToya Odom accused him of getting her pregnant. The pastor asked her to terminate the pregnancy, but she refused and gave birth to their son, John Karsten Bryant, in July 2015. Lord, how many cheering this man got? A paternity test later confirmed that the pastor was indeed a pappy, making him the father of six children by four women. As if he didn't have enough on his plate, in between all of his children and his church duties, he started a relationship with R&B singer Tweet in 2016. Due to Pastor Bryant's reputation for being a cheetah cheetah pumpkin eater, Tweet's fans were a bit worried about her new love interest walking through Times Square going to an Oprah Winfrey movie premiere and uh, I bumped into R&B singer Tweet. Uh, we uh, have uh, grown into an incredible uh, friendship. I call her my last lady. Uh, so I the couple remained low-key for the next few years up until Tweet hopped on Instagram Live in March 2019. By that point, it was clear her relationship with the pastor was over. Tweet said she was done with organized religion entirely. I'm not shading nobody, I'm telling my truth. And church has been the worst. I, I will not do church anymore. I love God, like you said, and I have a relationship with God, but you won't see me in nobody's church house. I'm not giving up nobody, not in my tithes, I'm not giving 10% to nobody, period. After Bishop Eddie Long of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church was involved in a scandal and later passed away from cancer, Pastor Bryant was named the new pastor of New Birth in 2018. He was given the task of getting the church out of $30 million in debt and boosting membership after the church lost more than half of its congregation. You can find out more about Bishop Long's scandal in the video linked in our description box. I seen the video, girl. That was some holy messiness, child. In 2020, Giselle decided to spin the block and gave the pastor another chance to cheat on her. Now what the hell? She had dodged a whole ass bullet. Damn, Giselle. Nobody ever told you there was more fish in the sea? She said the pastor was heavily pursuing her and she had forgiven him for his past mistakes. She added, I feel like he's a different person. I'm a different person. So we're baby stepping, but we're moving in a direction that we want to move into. And I do love when we're all together as a family. Girl, let that sh go now. Since he had to be in Atlanta to be close to the church, they embarked on a long-distance relationship. While they fronted like they were a happy couple, many people believed it was a fake relationship since Giselle was a cast member of The Real Housewives of Potomac at the time. Eh? Maybe she ain't as dumb as I thought. Even a woman named Tanya Griffin, who claimed she dated Pastor Bryant for 10 years, stated his relationship with Giselle was made for TV. Giselle's castmate, Monique Samuels, accused the pastor of cheating on her. Your pastor boyfriend is slinging his big D all around Atlanta. I got him in my little receipt book. Ooh. And Giselle's own father was caught on a hot mic saying, I think he's gonna take the mic off of me. I think I'm done. This is not a good move for her. You know, this guy's got six, seven baby mamas, you know. And then came more allegations that the pastor had fathered another child with another member of his congregation. Lord, he need to get fixed. He need to get fixed. Just take him to the vet. Take him to the vet and fix. He just sticking it everywhere, huh? Giselle addressed the rumors during an episode of Watch What Happens Live by stating the rumors were untrue. Girl, stop lying. And you ain't even there. How you know? Either way, it just wasn't meant to be. In July 2021, Giselle announced they had split up, partially due to the distance, and being in quarantine during the pandemic didn't make things easy for them. Now, him being a cheetah, cheetah, pumpkin eater, embarrassing you in these streets, and having a baby on you didn't make things easy. The following year, the pastor was hit with an IRS tax lien for $800,000 in unpaid taxes for 2008, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2018. You better collect more ties. Ooh. In 2022, during an interview with the Cool Sorar podcast, the pastor toyed with the idea of launching a cannabis business in the church to help drive male membership and entrepreneurship in the black community. He said, I'm mindful that I'm not after Christians. I'm after people who don't go to church. Churches are just recycling people from other churches. 
I'm looking for people who smell like weed. This ninja. He stated that New Birth is sitting on a massive amount of acres, and he doesn't understand why his deacons aren't taking advantage by growing weed on the land. I know you lying. He also discussed how the church needed to be repackaged to appeal to the grown and sexy. If you're looking for more women to add to your roster, just say you're looking for more women to add to your roster, pastor. He said the church was just way too conservative, and the Christians needed to learn how to engage with current cultural issues such as abortion, premarital boot knocking, and recreational substance use. Just throw the church away then. Just throw the church away. Why do you need it? Just have a church at the club, hell. His alternative form of preaching the gospel and his outspokenness brought more attention to him, and not in a good way. A writer for Charisma News called him a false prophet and blasted him for twisting and perverting God's character. The writer also encouraged Christians to develop stronger discernment and stop flocking to teachers who are turning them away from the truth. Amen. Due to his lifestyle and many of his teachings that some think go against biblical scriptures, many have called for the pastor to sit down, which is a term used in the Christian church that means he needed to stop his ministerial duties to protect the integrity of the Word of God. Sit your ass down. As a pastor, he is responsible for theologically influencing the lives of his congregation. And while some think he's out of order for the example he sets, others continue to flock to his services. It appears that adultery and creating multiple out of wed Locked children are no longer seen as taboo in the church, and parishioners are willing to turn a blind eye to a pastor's character flaws on the basis of forgiveness and extending grace. So we just ain't got no more moral standards for pastors, huh? Just throw the moral standards away. Anybody can be a pastor nowadays. Okay, 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 that's what we're doing, okay. But when is the right time to hold these men of God accountable? Some believe that once a church lowers the bar for its spiritual leader, it won't be long until the loss of moral integrity engulfs the entire congregation. Exactly! The Bible speaks on this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. The scripture reads, <clears throat> But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Amen, Pastor. Preach on The right to lead should be earned, not given. But hey, what do we know? We're nothing but a trashy little gossip channel. So we'll just sit here, mind our business, eat our snacks, and watch from a distance as these men of God continue acting up so we can create more content for our mega church messiness series. <laughs> now, besties, if you enjoyed this video, let us know down below and thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Amen.